Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about open games that today we're going to be playing. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, it's going to be weird getting used to saying that. The last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and started our first case, we're defending our friend Larry. And this guy, Frank Sawit, who's a pun because his name is Sawit and he's the witness, basically is saying that he saw Larry flee the scene of the crime. We contradicted what uh, some of the stuff that he said last time, and now we're going to get into his next testimony. You see, when I heard, when I, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. So... The contradiction's a pretty easy one to spot in this one. Uh, but just like last time, I'm gonna be pressing all of the different statements just so we see all of the dialogue. Of course, if you go down to the description, you'll see timestamps. And it'll sh go ahead and show you when I actually get to the contradicting part. So, you said heard, not saw? Yes, heard. All I saw was the body lying there. I didn't think to look at anything else, least of all my watch. Hmm, isn't that a little strange? So you're saying you heard something. If you were so shocked by the body, you wouldn't hear anything at all. This has always been like a bit of a weird point, and even Payne will object here. It's, it's a really weird point. It's ludicrous to suggest he wouldn't hear anything. I'm on Payne's side with this one. Witness, continue your testimony. There's a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Are you sure it was the television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there, were no radi there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. So witness has testified. He heard the time. So yeah, each time we press this, Mia will be like, there's something weird about this, and it's telling you, hey, you're supposed to present, but I want to show all of the different dialogue. Different bits of dialogue. How do you explain the gap? Well, witness, can you explain this? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. Uh, video? Yes, that would explain why the time was wrong. True, true. Right. I think the problem lies someplace else. We're... we've... we're agree... we're... I think it's supposed to say we've agreed, but it says we are agreed <laughs> that you heard the time at the scene then. That's why I thought it was 1 o'clock p.m. Are you sure the voice you heard said it was 1 o'clock p.m.? Yes, I can practically hear it now. It was quite clear. Mr. Payne, has the prosecution ver verified this testimony? My apologies, Your Honor. I, too, have only just learned that the witness heard the time. Oh, I'm really sorry. I only just remembered it now. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Well, you just watch it. <laughs> Not much point pressing him on that one, was there? And so after this, Neil will say, Notice anything suspicious? And it'll just repeat, so yeah. In this first trial, there aren't that many useful hints, but that's mostly because uh, these ones are pretty easy. I think you can basically present this on any statement. But right here, he'll say, There was a voice coming... There was a voice saying the time it was probably coming from the television. However, however, if you remember, if you remember last time, I can't speak today. Apparently, we got a record saying that during the time of the murder, all electricity was out. Even the cordless phones weren't working. So, Objection. hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery, and this record proves it. 
you couldn't have heard a television or a video. I, well... The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sot? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sot, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather... distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sot. Let's hear your testimony. Once more, please. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. So, this one is another one where it's quite easy to point out, but I'll go ahead and press anything anyways. Also, the uh, cross-examination music is different. And so, during cross-examinations, there are two types of cross-examination music. There's one where it's just normal cross-examining, and then once you're getting super close to finally figuring out the truth, then a, a more intense version plays. That strikes me as, very, as a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry. I only just remembered that table clock. Uh, table clock? There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Uh, table clock? Was there, there, was there a clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used to hit the victim. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. That must have been what I saw. Whoops, I... Also, great hint, Mia. I'll go ahead and press that. Why didn't you tell us that in the first place? I guess it must have just slipped my mind. I'm not really sure how it happened myself. So what you says you saw the table clock. End of story. Now find the contradiction. Thanks. <laughs> so this one is also a pretty easy one right here. It says, yeah, the murder weapon the killer used it to hit the victim. However, the weapon was a statue, not a clock. Objection! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was the statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? You with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sot. Hey, I I saw it there, okay? It's that's a clock. Your Honor, if I may Yes, Mr. Payne. I should what you stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove it I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sot, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. 
That's why you were so certain about the time. W what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... that... that day! I never... Look, I... the clock! I heard... no, I mean I saw... saw! Jesus. So yeah, that's what's known as an Ace Attorney Breakdown, where basically whenever you get very close to cornering the murderer, they basically start freaking out, and it's usually quite a scene. Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? whole case is writing on this. I better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sot heard was definitely this clock, a fact which is clear if you simply... Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard that clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow, precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sot heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sot, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! <laughs> you forgot one thing! Uh-oh. What's he talking about? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict this witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sott. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Uh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sott. Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock running three hours slow? Figure out the reason you'll have your proof. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidences to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! <laughs> Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock was running three hours slow. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sot? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Order, order, I say. 
And that ends our first case. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client? He, uh, he was arrested and he's been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. And with that, the court is adjourned. So yeah, that's our first case. It turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sot let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sot grabbed the nearest blunt object he he could find. And so yeah, that's our first case. I think I've said that like three times already. But yeah, I during those segments where the music is really like, it's super excited and like, I don't want to interrupt any of that. I just want to keep it like flowing at a steady pace just so, you know, I don't interrupt your viewing experience. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen the trial end on such a satisfying note. Never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, I met imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me, I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Phoenix was probably gonna say something really bad, but this game is rated T for teen, so... <laughs> Congratulations, Harry. H Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this. Ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat! Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh hey! H here take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that- Actually, I made the- this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. R really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick! Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? Larry. Are you so sure? I excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Well, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? H huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? <laughs> Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? It was the murder weapon. This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. But she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. 
Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink to a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. Unless you count the clock he gave me a... I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. <laughs>